In this lesson, we begin an exploration of various synthesizers and their functions. We will start by comparing them with traditional instruments. We know from lesson one what sound is, how it is transmitted through the air, and how we perceive it. We also know that sound has three essential elements, what we've been calling the big three, pitch, timbre, and loudness. All musical instruments, electronic or acoustic, must allow a performer to produce and control the big three. Any musical instrument can be broken down into three basic areas, each with its own function. Sources modifiers and controllers. We know we need something vibrating to provide our basic waveform. On the violin, the strings act as sources of vibration and are responsible for the basic waveforms and frequency of pitches coming from the instrument. Modifiers change a source's wave shape and amplitude, making them more musically useful. The body and bridge of a violin act as modifiers, giving the instrument its particular timbre and amplifying the source's vibration so that they can be heard. Modifiers themselves make no sound. They can only alter a source's waveform. The big three, pitch, timbre, and loudness, can be thought of as residing in these two areas, sources and modifiers. The most important functions of an instrument from a player's standpoint are those that allow precise changes in the big three. These are called controllers, and like modifiers, they make no sound. We hear their effect on sources and modifiers. It is important to realize that all synthesizers are the same, regardless of whether they are analog or digital, regardless of whether they are played from a keyboard, guitar, or drum pad. All synths must provide sources and modifiers that can be precisely controlled by the performer. Indeed, any musical instrument must provide these same features. What makes synthesizers unique is the variety of ways in which the big three can be controlled. In this lesson, we'll be looking at analog sources and modifiers. In the next lesson, we will see how they can be controlled to produce imitative sounds. Let's look at some sources first. The reed of a clarinet the strings of a double bass, the mouthpiece of a tuba. All of these things act as sources in a musical instrument. Within synthesizers, there are electronic circuits called oscillators and noise generators that act as sources of audio waveforms, the electronic equivalent to acoustic vibrations. Every synthesizer must have at least one source Many have more than one available. Let's look at the source section of a typical synthesizer. Before we begin, here are some things to keep in mind whenever you are checking out any function on any synthesizer. Whenever you are investigating a synthesizer function, here are some general things to look out for. First, what, if any, selectable features does the function have? These are usually associated with switches. Next, check out any variable parameters. These are usually associated with sliders, knobs, or number ranges, and are often manually adjustable, as in the case of most volume controls. Then determine if any of the variable parameters are controllable. That's really the key to synthesis, controlling parameters with various functions. We'll be looking into that in the next lesson. Finally, which of these features and parameters are programmable? In other words, can their settings be memorized by the instrument when you make a sound? We will be seeing all of these functions and parameters shortly. A typical synthesizer source is the oscillator. You can think of an oscillator as the basic raw material for sound design. 
they determine the general pitch range and timbre for most sounds. Most oscillators, sometimes called VCOs or DCOs, have both selectable features and variable parameters. The typical oscillator allows you to select one of two or more wave shapes. This allows you to choose a basic timbre. The most common waveforms are sawtooth, a bright, brassy sounding timbre with all of the harmonic frequencies in its partial structure. Square, a hollow sounding timbre with only the odd harmonic frequencies in its partial structure. You'll be seeing a variation called pulse wave in just a minute. The triangle wave sounds much like the square wave, except it is much duller. It also has only odd harmonic frequencies in its spectrum, but they are of less amplitude than those of a square wave. The sine wave is sometimes available as a selectable waveform. It has a flat, pure timbre. Its spectrum only contains the fundamental. The essential variable parameter on an oscillator is tuning. This allows you to adjust the frequency of the oscillator over a wide range of musical pitches. On most instruments, it is possible to tune the oscillator anywhere from the lower to upper thresholds of pitch perception. So remember, the oscillator is the source of pitch and basic timbre. Let's leave the animation now and explore synthesizer sources. Let's check out the source section of this instrument. It has two oscillators and a noise generator for voice. Let's start with the oscillators. Each oscillator is essentially the same. If we look at the selectable features, we find that there are three waveforms available. Sawtooth. Pulse wave. triangle. The pulse waveform has variable pulse width that can change the square wave to a narrow pulse. This changes the timbre from hollow, only odd harmonic partials, to bright and buzzy, all the harmonic partials. Another selectable feature is sync. The sync function is explained in detail in your manual, but here are some things to keep in mind about it. Sync forces an oscillator to be in perfect tune with the master oscillator, which in this case is oscillator one. Changing the tuning of an oscillator doesn't affect pitch. Instead, it emphasizes different harmonic frequencies, producing a timbre change. We'll see some interesting uses of sync in upcoming lessons. Along with these selectable features, the oscillator has two variable parameters as well. Tuning in semitones and pulse width which we've seen before another source on this instrument is the noise generator it has no variable parameters and only one selectable feature on and off Let's look at some modifiers. Most instruments have at least two, one for changing loudness and another for changing timbre. The bell of this clarinet and this volume pedal are loudness modifiers. Synthesizers use a modifier called amplifiers. Let's look at the typical amplifier section on a synthesizer. The variable parameter of an amplifier is, of course, loudness, sometimes called output level, gain, or volume. 
Amplifiers modify the source's waveform by altering its amplitude. Usually, an amplifier can only make the source amplitude less than the original value. This kind of change in level is called attenuation, which simply means to make less. The key thing to keep in mind about amplifiers is that they modify only one of the big three, loudness. The amplifier is the simplest modifier. It usually has no selectable features and one variable parameter. Possibly the most important modifiers on any musical instrument are those that affect timbre. A fuzz tone or the body of a violin can be thought of as timbre modifiers. Timbre modifiers alter a source's spectrum. On synthesizers, the basic timbre modifiers are filters. Let's look at some typical filters. Since filters are timbre modifiers, we'll use a spectrum plot to find out how filters alter the source's waveform. Filters can selectively attenuate specific frequencies. They have a variable parameter called the cutoff point, sometimes labeled frequency. This parameter can be tuned to anywhere within the limits of pitch perception. Partials on one side of this point will pass through the filter unmodified, while partials on the other side will be attenuated. The type of filter, called mode, will determine on which side of the point partials will be attenuated. In this graph, we have used a purple shadow to represent attenuation. You are looking at a spectrum in which all of the partials are attenuated. This would mean that right now, no partials are passing through the filter, and we would hear no sound. As the cutoff point is raised, the attenuation is selectively removed from the spectrum, starting at the fundamental. This allows us to hear more and more of the waveform's partial structure. The sound will change timbre from very dull to very bright. Filters are really just sophisticated tone controls, like those you might find on a stereo or guitar amp. The type of filter shown here is called a low-pass filter, because it allows partials whose frequencies are below the cutoff point to pass unmodified. The attenuation begins at the cutoff point and increases as you go above it. This attenuation slope is called roll-off. Look in your manual for more details about filters. Here are the essential facts. Filters are responsible for changing the basic timbre of a source. This makes them extremely important to sound design because timbre is the most distinctive parameter of the big three. We will learn in upcoming lessons that control of the filter's cutoff point is the heart of almost all sound creation on analog synthesizers. Remember, filters can modify timbre only by removing partials from a source. For this reason, using filters to create sounds is often called subtractive synthesis. The filter is the most important modifier on a synthesizer. Generally, there are two variable parameters associated with a filter, cutoff and resonance. Cutoff determines the basic timbre of a source. On a low-pass filter, lowering the cutoff removes partials from a source's spectrum. This makes the original timbre change from bright to dark. Changing the cutoff point like this is called sweeping a filter. The resonance control emphasizes frequencies near the cutoff point, making them louder.
Sweeping the filter with the resonance turned up allows us to focus in on individual partials of a wave's spectrum. Can you hear the difference between a sawtooth partial structure and that of a square wave? Although the low-pass filter is the most useful mode, there are other kinds of filters. They all have the same variable parameters, cutoff and resonance. Let's compare four different filter modes. The low-pass filter mode removes partials above the cutoff point. The high pass mode removes partials below the cutoff point. Bandpass filter removes partials to either side of the cutoff point. And notch filters remove frequencies at the cutoff point. This concludes the second lesson. Keep in mind that all synthesizers are basically the same. They must all have sources, modifiers, and controllers. And while features and price may vary from instrument to instrument, they generally work in the same way. One is not necessarily better than another. The difference between various synthesizers can be thought of as being similar to the difference between guitars. Some people prefer strats, some prefer Les Pauls, and others prefer Kramers. They all have different features, but basically they are all played in the same way.